That's where we have to think about the management strategies as a long-term process rather than as a short-term process. Okay? And that's the message I wanted. So I, I know you, you, you may not be interested with whatever that happened in Rhode Island because you know there's nothing to, you guys have nothing to do with Rhode Island. But the lesson that we can take from this research is we need to incorporate the, the economic analysis or the market study analysis before implementing a management strategy. And that's something is, is lacking in um, mostly in, in the management strategies that is taken in taken place in India. Uh, so, the plan is, I'll give an introduction, I'll give a research, what is the research issue, what was the research issue that I was trying to tackle, and then based on that issue, I came up with the objective, and then I use, I'm using some of the, the economic model, I'll go through, skim through the, the model, I don't want to discuss much about it, but I just want to give you a sense of what I have done. And then I'll give you, uh, I'll explain the data, and then I'll show you some of the some of the results, and then I'll conclude with the di discussion and later part how this will be useful for Kerala in Kerala scenario. How this this research can be useful, um, or this type of research can be useful in Kerala scenario. Okay. Now, before getting into the detail, I'm giving you some uh, sense of the shellfish industry in the United States. Shellfish industry includes scallops, uh, clams, so, uh, and then shang, uh, welk. All those are part of the shellfish. Even though welk is, uh, shang is not a, uh, it's a shellfish, but it's not comes under the molluscan, but again, it's, uh, it's being considered as a, an important uh, shellfish uh, product. It's a high value product in the United States. It's not just like here, it's very highly, um, like it's much more expensive than the fish, like the fin fish. In terms of value, it comes to about 66% of the U.S. production, but in terms of volume, it's only 22%. So that's why I said it's high value. Even though if the production is limited, you're getting high, bigger money. <clears throat> and then, there's an increasing demand for shellfish throughout the United States. It's not just in one state. Throughout the United States, it has a high uh, demand. So uh, earlier, it was like a, a trash uh, resource. So, yeah, like um, in 1900, people harvest oysters from the sea and then they throw it out. And they don't want the, um, uh, the shellfish to be harvested. And later, you know, people start realizing that, oh, this is one of the, the um, you know, um, one of the best seafood. They start like consuming more. So, Earlier, they don't have any, any type of management for these kinds of resources. Later, they find out that the management of shellfish is necessary for properly um, uh, controlling the, the population of the shellfish. So that's why they started carrying out some kind of a shellfish management in uh, collaboration with industry shellfish sanitary conference. So the, the management of the, the management system of the shellfish works in such a way that each state has its own management practices. But the, the whatever the practices that they are they're doing has to be collaborated with the industry shellfish management sanitation conferences. <clears throat> Why? Because most of the time the shellfish is consumed raw in the United States. So they don't cook. It's, it's like they shuck the meat and then they suck it up. That's it. So the problem is, whenever you are using a raw seafood, there will be a, there's a lot of bacteria contained in the water will be absorbed in the body of the shellfish. And whenever you consume it, you might get sick. Okay. So that's where the interstate shellfish sanitation conference comes in. They say that, OK, if the, the bacteria content, the, the particular bacteria con content is a particular is above a particular limit, it's not consumable. Okay, so then so then the state government has to work with these guys to make sure that whatever the shellfish that is coming into the market does have a, a minimum safety limit. Okay. Now um, I'm just uh, this is just again the summary in, in Rhode Island. Um, so these are some of the so these are cohorts. Cohorts are, are otherwise called hard shell clams. 
നമ്മുടെ കക്കയാണ് പക്ഷെ നമ്മുടെ കക്കയല്ല ഇറ്റ്സ് ലിറ്റ് ബിൻ മോർ ലൈക്ക് ദി ഷെൽ ഇസ് ലിറ്റ് ബിൻ മോർ ഹാർഡർ ഇൻ ദിസ് കേസ് കൊഹോസ് and this is scallops i don't know whether we have it or not in a serrated ayatulla shell ulla idana we don't we don't eat the meat usually and uh, they have a the product that, that we consume is called the eye uh, so uh, adductor muscles uh, anybody from the fisheries side i don't think so okay uh, so the adductor muscles ulla other complete highly developed ayatulla it becomes a, a really a, a big um, a cylinder kind of form that's called the eye so i is consumed in case of the scallops and then the soft shell clams idu are nammada kakka nammada naattile kittuna kakka idana adinna variety then whelk uh, mussels and oysters these are the main shellfish that has been harvested in in these coastal areas the management strategy that they they are used is um uh, by designating the shellfish area um so so this is the figure of the the bay area it's called the narragansett bay and that's where the most of the the shell fishing is happening and the different fishing areas has been designated in in different um categories based on the water quality of that particular area okay so it could be uh, okay it could be completely prohibited so uh, some of the areas are not uh, not at all permitted to harvest selfish from that area and some of them are open so you can any any time you can go and um, harvest the selfish and some of them are partially controlled uh, management area what does that mean is if you have a, a torrential rain or if you have like a, a flood or something like that then the the runoff from the industrial areas and the agriculture land will come into the water and the water quality will deteriorate so in that case that area will be closed again so it's a conditional prohibited area so the idea of this management strategy is to meet the flow of the shellfish into the market but also <coughs> to make sure that the contamination uh from the bacteria is minimized so that whatever the, the consumers are consuming is a safe uh, selfish but the problem is so the the manual strategy is closing and opening of these conditionally prohibited area and these conditional prohibited areas are the main fishing areas for the shellfish so fishermen will usually go to this conditionally prohibited area for fishing so whenever we the the management say that we close the fishing the fishing area that means the the fishermen cannot harvest much of the shellfish from the open area so uh, as i said what's their idea was to to he- help to meter the flow of the uh, shellfish so that they have a continuous supply of shellfish throughout the year and also to minimize the health health risk but the issue is there will be like unexpected closing due to water quality issues so as i said there there is a torrential rain like a high high quantity of rain uh, rainfall happen because of the climate change now within 5 years they are seeing a unexpected um, you know uh, weather pattern so they cannot predict when the rain will come and when will be the the torrential rain they cannot predict so what whenever they have a high quantity of rainfall they close the area and say that okay we are closing it for 7 days or 14 days if if the amount of the water is still existing there then uh they're going to extend the closure time period so so what the issue is whenever they close it for an extended time period what they are doing is they are blocking the product to the, the market right so when you close the area you're cl- you're blocking the supply to the market so there is a inconsistency in the product flow so whenever there is a inconsistency in the product flow what happens is there will be a fluctuation or there there could be a, a possibility of price volatility price may increase price may go down depending on the closure and opening so people start like the fishermen start like complaining that oh we are losing our revenue so what are the the direct issue is we are losing our revenue because i cannot provide shellfish to the market i am losing my revenue as a fisherman 
again, the market won't wait for the fishermen. The market will approach the, the neighboring states to get the shellfish from that area and fill, fill the market. So they are actually getting a competition from the other states. So these are the two effects of that inconsistency of the product flow. That, that because of the, the closure of the management area. So now the, the, the fishermen start, like, so it's not like here, um, the, whenever there's a management um, uh, process, like whenever they start the management, framing the policy, the fishermen are, are part of it. It's not like, you know, it's more, it's more like a transparent process rather than here, like, you know, uh, in, uh, it go through the legislative <coughs> process and then they come up with the law. So the fishermen will come come to the conference, and I attended the conference also. So it was like a heated discussion between the, the authorities and the, the fishermen. The fishermen said that, no, we cannot agree to this, these kinds of management practices because we are losing the market, and also we are increasing the competition from the other states. So because of the heated decision, the discussion, that's where the, I, when I was attending the conference, then I said, okay, Let's, let's do a market study where we can look at how the price volatility, so you said that the price, the price is changing because of the inconsistency in the product flow. Let's check the price volatility. Let's look at the relationship between the quantity harvested and the price. Okay, so your idea is whenever you're, you're closing the market management strategies, your, the, the amount of the, the shellfish in the market will be lower, so then the price will go up, and then when you open the market or, or open the management area, then you will harvest a lot. So there will be a high quantity of shellfish, then the price will go down. So all the economic people, they know, you know, right? When the price goes up or the quantity goes up, the price will go down, right? So the, the <coughs> demand goes So I said, okay, let's study the relationship between the price and the quantity and then look at how volatile the mark the price is. And then we can come up with a decision. decision. Okay. So that's what our first step is. So we are trying to look at the interaction between the, the price and the quantity. So we are not looking at the price of the, that product and the quantity of that product. We are looking at price of that quantity and the quantity of that, quantity, uh, that particular shellfish and also price of a particular shellfish and the quantity of the other related shellfish. So it could also have some effect, right? So, so let's say uh, cohorts. Um, are the main uh, shellfish. So Kohogs had some issues with the price. So then if the, <clears throat> if the fishermen will go for the soft shell plant or oysters, then they can make, some, make up some revenue. So we need to look at the effect of the same species and also the different species on the price. Right? So we are looking in, in, um, into that. So, the overall effect, or overall uh, goal is to look at the inconsistency, how the effect of the inconsistency um, on the price of the shellfish. But we need to understand the expo cell price, how it is reacting in a raw item. So the relationship between the price of the particular shellfish and its quantity land. And then the price of the shellfish and quantity of the related products. <coughs> so I used an inverse almost ideal demand system. Since it is a perishable good, uh, how many of you heard about the inverse? All of you are from economics department, right? Okay. So most of you might have heard about the inverse uh, almost ideal demand system. So whenever there is a per perishable good, so like a meat product, juice, and um, uh, seafood, we use inverse almost ideal demand system. And it's it's most commonly used. It's um, um, you know it's not something that I make, came up with. It's it's a most commonly used method. And the general form of the model is is this. Which don't don't get scared with the the alpha and beta. It says that the share or the price of the of a particular uh, product depends on the quantity of that product and also the other product. It's, it's just simply. And so we are looking at, so whenever we are taking the first derivative, we can come up with the on price flexibility, a cross price flexibility, and a scale flexibility. So the on price flexibility is telling us what happens to the price when, when the quantity of that particular species is increasing or decreasing. The cross price flexibility says that what happens if the quantity of the price of the particular shellfish 
will change depending on the quantity of the other related species will change. Okay? The scale flexibility says that how the income of the people uh, affects the price of the, the shop fish. Okay? So we are looking at, by scale, looking at the scale flexibility, we are saying that whether this product is a normal good or a luxury good. So the interpretation is the absolute value of the uh, the on price flexibility is less than one, then the price is less fle less flexible or inflexible. If it is greater than one, it is highly flexible. So what does that mean? Is if, it, if the absolute value of the on price flexibility is greater than one, we are saying that if there is a small change in the quantity of the the shellfish harvested, then the price will will explode. So there there, there will be a high or an increase. Um, price for that particular company. The, the cross price flexibility, if it is negative, then we can say that two products are substitutes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Substitute means if one price, uh, one of the uh, one of the product is the uh, price of the one of the product will increase, the price of the other product will decrease. Okay? And the scale flexibility, if it is less than minus one, it's a necessary good, it's a normal good. If it is greater than minus one, it's a luxury good. I use the, uh, the empirical model where the, I also include month, event, and also the lag quantity of the shellfish because it, the month, some of the months, especially the summer months, there will be like a high demand for the shellfish because that's a vacation time. People move around and they, they used to go to like, you know, restaurants more, so the consumption might be higher in that case. The events sometimes, um, the, the festival season, especially the Christmas, Easter, and um, uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a holiday, just like the, the, the autumn here. So at that time, most of the time, the Catholic Christians, or the, uh, it, uh, not just the Catholic Christians, but most of the Christians will eat only shellfish or seafood rather than going for meat. So it could increase. It, could lead to high demand for the shellfish, so I included that as well. And then the price of the the quantity, the, the price of the shellfish can also depend on the the uh, the quantity harvested in the previous time period. Okay, if the, the if the shellfish has been harvested too much in the previous time period, it could affect the price this this time period because you know the, the price will go down, so it will take some time for to uh, to change the price. So I consider the lag on. And then I also consider, uh, this is like more empirical, so the, the original formula contained in nonlinear form, but uh, uh, for the ease of computation, usually they go for, uh, go for an approximated model using a linear form. But with the computational skills now, with the te computer technology, we can now come up with a nonlinear form. So the only thing is like we have to come up with our own codes for creating a nonlinear form. So I thought that why uh, well, I have to uh, I have to make sure that you know the approximation is not causing a bias. So whenever we are approximating, you know, uh, whenever we are rounding the figure, we might you know lose some of the the, uh, the figures, right? So so it could create some bias. So I just want to make sure that there is no bias whenever we are we are approximating the nonlinear to a linear form. The data I used. Uh, 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 shellfish manager landing data. The shellfish uh, landing data for uh, Rhode Island, which I got it from a statistical and uh, an Atlantic uh, fisheries information system, and they do have a <coughs> um, highly confidential trip level landing report from the dealers, and they give you the daily uh, landing. I used from 2007 to 2012, and the daily landing I aggregated to a weekly uh, level to smooth out the variation in the uh, in the daily um, daily data. The species that I consider was cohas. Within the cohas, you have four different categories depending on the size of the cohas. So um, the, the reason why I choose all the four different categories and different market is because these two uh, these two uh, cohorts are going in a separate mar a separate market. They usually go for raw, so they shuck and they just uh, eat it. Cherry is the one. Cherry cohorts are the one 
you steam it and then you use just like what we do for coca. And the chowders are used for uh, uh, chowders. Chowders is like a soup, so for making soup. So these are going for three different markets. So I consider these two as one product. Chop neck and little neck as one product. Cherry as a different product and chowder as a different product because these are three different uh, markets. Then I consider bay and bay scallops and the sea scallops, which is, uh, I consider as one, and then the web. And the rest of the thing I didn't eat included, uh, like oysters, mussels, and soft shell clams, I didn't include. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so. So, then I'm coming back, due to the time concern, I'm coming back to the, uh, the research section. So the all price flexibility uh, shows that it's negative. Remember the, uh, the figure that I showed you before, if it is negative, is less than uh, one, um, then it is, uh, it's less flexible or inflexible. So the price is not responding much with the quantity. So, so what we can conclude is the price is, price is not responding. So it needs a huge amount of harvest to change the price. Okay, and uh, so whatever the, the fishermen were, were, were making the claim was wrong because you know they feel that the price is changing, but it is not. Um, you know the, the data shows that it needs a lot of harvest or a lot of quantity of harvest yet to change the price. And the and we also see that the cross price flexibility shows that all of the products are substitute, substitutes. So if one of the price of uh, one of the, the price of one of the product is changing, you can always go. Uh, so one of the product is going down, you can always go for the other species to make up your number. So so that's the advantage with the uh, substitutability. So now ma so what's the uh, what's the conclusion that we can make? The management authority can move forward with whatever the strategies they were planning, closing and opening this, the, uh, the management area because the fishermen are not completely affected by the revenue. Now, how this is, how this is relevant in our scenario? So, for, it's not just for the, the particular management that I, I just mentioned. The relevance of this study is like for any management to be effective, you need to consider the market forces also. Because the any type of regulation, so we are so whatever the management strategies that we are making is we are making some kind of a regulation or restriction in the people behavior, right? So whenever we are making a, a restriction in the people behavior, that if, if it is not in a good direction, that will eventually affect the, the uh, fish stock population. So if you are not considering the market force, eventually the fish population will be affected and then the market management strategy that you pick will not be effective. Okay? So that's why we have to consider um, these, types, these kinds of market forces also while trying to make management costs. Uh, the economic benefits also need to be considered. Economic benefits uh, include not just the, the revenue of the fishermen, but also the um, uh, the fish stock population also. They, so whether the fish stock has been increased. So one of the examples that I, I really want to consider here is we are using a trawl ban for our management practices for a long term, more than like 30 years now. And it's the, the trawl ban is called the closed season strategy. And closed season strategy has been uh, studied extensively throughout the world and it's been considered as not effective st management strategy. And throughout the world they have been you know, they changed the management strategy already. We are still stuck with that that close season strategy. One of the, so I was reading the uh, the the previous commission report. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Mina Kumari. Mina Kumari commission report. I never saw a, a economic aspect in that in that recommendation. So whenever they come up with the Mina Kumari committee report, and they never consider the economic impact of this particular management strategy, then then in the, in the long run, there is no use. And if you look at the, the strategy that we have been using, it's been like 30 to 40 years now, we've been con continually using the, the troll ban, and I now saw a report saying that the fish stock has been increased for a particular fish. So 
that's something we need to really need to consider whenever um, I'm not criticizing any management strategy, but we need to consider the market rules whenever we are, we are framing the management policy. So with that, I'll take uh, questions if you want. Thank you, Pradeesh, for introducing us a new uh, new area, a new product that is selfish, selfish, and the different dimensions of selfish uh, market uh, market analysis, uh, particularly related to the price volatility in this sector. Let's move to the second presentation. Please keep your questions in mind. We will take it care of. Thank you. Thank you, Agriculture to tourism has led to a massive 
land development throughout the island and there are 15 tourist resorts in the premises of Puar Estuary and nearly 40 resorts in and around the Puar village. Majority of the res these resorts release uh, their effluents directly to the uh, estuary. New beach resorts are being under construction in the Puar Vilnium area. With heavy metal analysis of sample collected from three different areas in Puar Estuary in first six months of the our project. The study indicates that estuary and ecosystem are heavily disturbed by wastewater discharge through sewage disposal, beach resort, and this also affected the um, uh, bar mob, which is mainly focused on juveniles, juvenile fishes and um, the uh, fish uh, nurseries which are uh, mainly um, salinity, the poor, uh, low salinity level. They are um, growing in low salinity level and heavy metal content in this uh, study uh, monitored assessment of the pollution load in water sediments of fishes. It is found that pollution load is highest in all region and heavy metal content in water and sediment samples collected in poor study indicates that most of the heavy metal studies was detected in this, uh, that means uh, iron, zinc, cadmium and other um, um, chemicals and um, the level of heavy metal uh, containing poor estuary water in order to be iron is the highest one and uh, low level uh, is identified in um, cadmium. At, plus, at times the effluents discharges may cause mass mortality of fishes and other aquatic organisms in the estuary when it mixes with the wastewater dis discharge from tourist resorts and other agropotent activities. This happens when the bar mouth closes and when there is sudden inflow of fresh water into the estuary by rain and river runoff. So steps should be taken to protect this environment by remo removing the waste from the area and also keeping bar mouth open always. And ecotourism, there are also hotels and recreational facilities, which is the direct conflict with the local residents who wish to preserve their culture and livelihood as natural habitats have restored an important flora and fauna in the bed of ex extinction. And there are more flora and um, fauna indigenous to Kua that have become uh, extinct or are on the government endangered species, especially Sonoratia. And the present study reveals that if the environmental destruction is con continued, there is no other option to fish a cook or poor who must look into the other means of subsidence. And which I, uh, later I will discuss about the uh, recommendations. And marine fisheries, many studies were undertaken regarding the small scale fisheries of major fishing villages in the London coast. But very little study has been carried out about the poor fish landing center or poor uh, or estuary. This result of the study of the main objective of identifying thin fish resources and eco-friendly fishing methods revealed out of 308 marine fishes of Malabar coast, 45 species of thin fishes are found in Pua and caught by four major artisanal gears, namely gillnet, hook and line and two forms of inshore and offshore inciting gears. Juveniles of um, Indian mackerel, that means um, Isla, Mughils, Mullet and uh, Gola Mughil uh, and um, uh, Karangs are distributed throughout the work course and sometimes their shoal enter into the estuary. Uh, um, at this point, the shoal is not coming when the pollution, the highest level of contamination or pollution is there. So it's a very um, important point, important point of this study. And juveniles of ribbon fishes have high demand as dry fish in small scale industry. Natural calamities such as sea erosion do not cause much damage in this village due to its land corner of continental shelf. Therefore, these resorts are mainly focused on this area. And during rainy season, especially in southwest monsoon and northwest in northeast monsoon, when the sea becomes rough, the fisher, fisher workers are forced to remain idle and live under the condition of poverty. And I guess uh, skip the all these. And next study. Um, a study is based on the livelihood status of the fishermen in Pua. The study is based on uh, the period between the project conducted from um, the set, September to November. And uh, these are the mainly, generally traditional fishermen are forced to take up different types of in income generating activities during non-fishing period. But um, this study area, most of the fishermen were not interested in engaging any other income generating activities out of job. 
and therefore families goes to fully depend upon fishing and fish sale. And some seas and when sea becomes very enough, fish workers are forced to remain idle and live under the condition of severe poverty. 87% all the facilities are there, but they are not uh, engaged in, uh, they are not find any method for, uh, alternative method for um, their employment or their, their job. The activity status shows that 34 percentage uh, people engaged in full time in fishing and related activities and it is and there are weak supportive, uh, weak institutional support is the only uh, main uh, reason behind the poverty in this area. Institutional support means either government or non-government. Majority of the uh, respondents argued that the performance of these institutions are very poor. Um, and marketing the in, in, in market facilities exploitation of fishery wealth by middlemen or traders is main problem in this study area. And fishermen and consumers in fishing market in this area are involved in middlemen or four traders. There are only four traders in this area in who are uh, fish landing area. And majority of the respondents reported exploitation by middlemen as the single most constraint of fish fish marketing and remaining 50 percent day, 15 percent day res respondents reported poor icing facilities, lack of infrastructure and lack of finance. And Training. In case of training, 98% uh, of sample fishermen have not attended any training programs from government or non-government organizations. And in case of number of working days they are going to fishing, the sample fishermen reported that the average fishing days in a month ranges between only 10 days in bad season and around 15 days in good season. And consumption always, uh, consumption of the household is indicate uh, nearly for, uh, three fourth of the uh, household expenditure was for household consumption, and and total and annual and annual expenditure also in here. And the study reveals that poor livelihood status and improper occupational structure and poor institutional support the main reason for their poverty. And these are about the livelihood status. I go to the um, recommendation side and government's responsibility we know about the what are the main uh, responsibility of the government to reduce or the reduce poverty but in here um, some agencies are functioning under the department with various objectives scale efficient welfare these are the main agencies uh, given the um, under the department agencies with given the welfare and reduction of poverty Policy recommendation regarding the tourism destination, regarding as a tourism destination, uh, use of traditional uh, robots and solar boats instead of speed boats and diesel run boats, which will ensure lowering pollution level, uh, especially in estuarine. Need of training and awareness program to both drivers on biodiversity, uh, avifauna, uh, ecological importance, complete ban on plastic entering the river system. Sewage treatment plants are mandatory for tourist resort and calculating carrying capacity and practicing sustainable and ecologically viable tourism. Regular monitoring of fauna and flora of estuary and avian canal and biodiversity inventory or record need to be carried out. It's a complicated record is very important and environment impact assessment of the area need to be carried out to ascertain the impact of tourism on the biodiversity and safety measures for tourists need to be strengthened need for interpretation center at starting point of the formal lecture or video clipping about the ecological and historical importance. Need a guideline for the tourists regarding what they have to do or have not to do for maintaining the backwater ecosystem. Regarding the uh, estuary for a sustainable development, estuary in areas densely populated by humans with a high productivity. And estuary are, um, are known the world over the breeding of nursery <coughs> and ground for variety of marine fish apart. Most of the estuary fishes are in need, not permanent residence, but seasonal migrants from marine areas, especially during the early stages of life. There are um, out of 19 fishes, 8 fishes have common economic importance at poor area. These are main uh, fishes. An ongoing experimental cage culture in poor estuary by Raji Gandhi Institute uh, give encouraging results. This, uh, this cage culture mainly for the fisher folk who are not going to 
uh, uh, going to get any work at the time of the post monsoon season. Uh, so we are uh, um, we are given some training to these fisher folk about the experimental fish culture. Similarly, the fishes like sea bass, milkfish, bluegill, and resident shell fishes like um, uh, like macrobatrium and green crab are identified for suitable for this case culture. Experience establishment of aquarium hatchery is very important and Sunday marine fisher is also trying to uh, do some uh, welfare programs to recycle training programs to fisher and ABM canal is very important for poor, so preserve, preserve this uh, canal is also and poverty reduction, some policies are to be noted here. Um, and the objective is, now government has a fisheries policy and add some more policies to enter um, uh, these type of uh, training programs to fisher folk. And these are the main uh, recommendations to maximizing the production of fish. And first one is about the increase the per capita consumption of fish. So uh, uh, fish case culture is one of the recommendations. Second is career, such as aquaculture. Aquaculture biological, that means um, here also some uh, mariculture, aquaculture training also give, will be given to the, this uh, type of um, fish report. And entry level of aquaculture jobs regular either at a high school diploma or an undergraduate degree in aquaculture, but more advanced position that you are masters at. Therefore, some uh, basic uh, knowledge about this aquaculture or medical are given to this, which of course is somewhat necessary. Third, to enhance the living condition of the fishermen and their families to maximizing economic benefits. Provision of cold storage, uh, fish land, fish handling, processing facilities, production of different value. Um, if for example, fresh to home, we all know about the online fish market, fresh to home. Such activities also need to be encouraged among these people. An introduction of a board service by district tourism, promotion council by streams to connecting internationally on the beach, Kovalam and Pua should be planned to generate income for unemployed fishermen. Fourthly, to maximize export and foreign exchange learning capacity. And these are the, uh, um, these are the main uh, part of need monitoring and regulating. Monitoring through the producers on difference between small scale and then there are many um, small traders who engage in this activity for, and the, the fishermen get very few amount from fishing activity. So, um, producers the monitoring and, need, and there is a need for monitoring producers, post harvest workers, mainly focused on the women. Uh, so we also try to handle these type of post harvest, post harvest workers, some uh, recommendations are given in here. And the processing factories, inadequate knowledge and preservation, um, uh, 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 this only um, um, through training, this only um, um, Committed to the training programs so of skill development and information for good food hygiene, local fresh uh, fish trade, and traditionally processed fish production um, and uh, export trade, distant urban trade, auxiliary workers are also encouraged for this for um, selling baskets and ice, repairing boats, repairing and selling food for other fishers, middlemen. 50% of the um, earnings are from the fish sale, also given, not for fishermen. So uh, there is a fixed price. Fish, um, fixed price are very important for these type of middlemen. Uh, a number of market related issues raised by small scale and there is massive development limited. You know, we all know about the multiple but this is only 3% of fish produce in the state. Lack of an effective plan to purchase, store and release excess fish to the market in an appropriate time. This is another recommendation and optimum utilization and minimum wastage, minimum wastage of fishery resources and optimum usage. Many of the uh, extra fish uh, production are dumped to the middle of the sea. So it's not an good for the um, um, fisher, fishermen. Uh, so uh, conserve uh, um, uh, optimum utilization and minimum wastage of fish resources is one of the another important recommendation. And quality improvement of traditional fish products. 
and uh, with almost no support from dining system. It's another important point. And technological, there is no technological development prior to this area. And without having any strict regulatories, large scale industrialization which has all other in recent years in coastal areas. And regulatory regime has a devastating impact on marine livestock and health of the fishermen. And rigid steps should be undertaken to transfer the outcome of research and technological development. And then thank you. So the study suggests that in order to build the uh, ecological and social resilience of the coastal poor village, uh, we should focus on the institutional support, particularly both uh, private and uh, gov uh, government institutional support is necessary uh, for the uh, particular area or the particular people. So now the uh, floor is open for the discussion. Uh, we can discuss the two papers. Good afternoon. It's a very specific question. My question is to Radhi sir. Uh, so the question is that you talked about closed season strategy and told that there is no economic impact which is being considered. But the point of my query is that as far as closed season strategy is concerned, there is also an ecological impact. So considering this ecological impact, is there any alternative? That means when you set a strategy for management, what is that? very good alternative for closed season strategy, considering not only the economic impact, but also ecological impact. That's my first question. Second question is regarding, uh, as you told, uh, shellfish, it has been high demand in the markets. So also high price is being yielded. So my question is that whether the benefit of this high price is passed over to the cultivators of shellfish. Those people in the industry of shellfish, are they getting money? That, that's it. Thank you. So, uh, Mrs. Dakarin, um, the first question is like uh, when you mentioned about the close price flexibility, is it within the spe uh, same species or between species you mentioned? That is the first question. And the second one is in for a um, state like Rhode Island, uh, where uh, people have large amount of choice before them, um, like does this cross price flexibility really matter? Like um, uh, if, if the Farmers or the farmers within the same island is allowed to produce, say, clams alone, small clams alone. Um, it doesn't mean that the consumers will be consuming only that which is being given by the uh, own farmers. They have a choice to import uh, from, uh, as you mentioned, neighboring states, uh, whichever, maybe scallops, if they want to have scallops, they have a choice to import. So it's, it's a different question. The producers and the consumers are two different set of people. And how do you tackle the choice problem with this cross-price flexibility? Uh, to uh, the first presenter, uh, um, my first one is, uh, with, uh, you, know, you have said that it is a very good managerial practice uh, uh, to, I mean, it is a very, uh, I mean, a, a successful managerial practice, but you said that before that, uh, there were fisher, uh, fishermen and uh, uh, manager, manager, managerial people who were engaged in a very uh, heated debate. So, uh, how could, uh, you know, uh, is that a perceived difference, you know, uh, they, they felt that uh, their uh, price, I mean, uh, they, they felt that price is lesser. Is that their perception or uh, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, and uh, the, the same thing is that uh, is a, a very good managerial practice means, you know, you have to consider the, uh, the, uh, the uh, grievance of the fishermen. So, uh, how did you do about that? Then uh, the next question also related to that is that, you know, you said that when uh, the price flexibility is not that much, you can uh, go for a substitute product. When the uh, when the product is not available, you can go for a substitute product. So if the uh, you know in, in that season, in that particular season, that uh, particular substitute is not available, what will he do? I mean, what that fish and cook will do? And uh, to towards the second uh, presenter, it's not a question. It's a, a very uh, I mean I really appreciate her research because you know uh, she. Uh, um, uh, very, uh, I mean, uh, she gave very important and specific uh, recommendations. Uh, and uh, one more uh, suggestion I have to give you that uh, you said the board environmental impact assessment. You can add social impact assessment also. Uh, 
are we considering the ecological impact also, right? So for the closed season uh, strategy. Are we, with the present scenario, are we, are you, are you, are you telling that are we considering the ecological impact as well? No. After, after the close season strategy, after the close season, what the fisherman is doing is going, they're rushing for fishing. They're using the same trawl to wipe out the floor of the ocean. And they are killing most of the, the seafood there. It's, uh, you know, that's why the close season strategy was a failure in throughout the, it's not just here. I'm, I'm, it's not, I make up this, this you know, uh, saying that it's a failure. Um, throughout the world, the research has been done, and then what happens with the, the close season uh, strategy is, after the close season, the fishermen, look at here, for, I think it's 60 days right here. Here? 45. 45. So 45 days, they've been, not, they've been not going for fishing, and they are not making any kind of income. So as a rational human being, even though it, 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 even if it is me, I, for the next day, whenever they open their fishery for, for fishing, what they do is they will make max, they will try to maximize their catch so that they will get their profit because there, there will be a rush after that, that day. So today, if I don't catch it, tomorrow somebody will catch it, I lose money. So nobody will wait for uh, you know the fish to grow or um, the juveniles to grow a little bit bigger so that I can catch it. It's, it's an issue. Nobody consider that. And uh, marketing. Again, the second thing that you asked is a marketing. Um, so, uh, can you repeat the marketing issue? What was that? That is whether the fish farmers, they are getting benefit. With high price, whether they are... Well, benefit. yeah. So, so the, the marketing is, is an issue everywhere. So, it's not just uh, here or in the United States. So, marketing is something, you know... Um, there also there are some issues with the marketing and so that's that's why um, we need to know what is happening in the industry first of all so um, whether it is a it's a trawl band strategy or whether it is a you know closed season closed and opening of the management area how that's going to be affecting the, the price of the shellfish or price of the any food then we can come up with some kind of a policy so what i did with my research is i showed them that the price is not going to be changing. Okay, as an economist, my job is done. Now, as a policymaker, they have to sit down with the fishermen and then try to come up with the strategy. Okay, so that's what I was trying to say that. So, um, even if here, if you want to frame a new policy, it's not just, you know, some scientists, you know, get together and then work together. It should be a, a transparent process. You should, you should hear from both sides. And, you know, there's a, um, I don't know, um, I don't know whether you guys heard about it, the decentralization of our, 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 our uh, grammar panchayat, the decentralization of the power, is one of the, the most effective strategies which has been, been used in all over the world. They don't, they don't cite our example, but especially in the fishery resources, the main management strategies now most of the, the countries are adopting is give power to the people. So try to make it cooperate you, and you know, the the let them decide. So uh, I know um, I know yeah, you you were talking about the grievances about the fishermen. So the grievances of the fishermen has to be considered. So here, when I started the research, the the fishermen were saying that our price is going to be losing because of closing the management area. So that was their perception. Again, one another question I got that is that a perception uh, or not. So it was a perception. So if we, if we cannot provide them with that answer, then that perception will continue, that grievances will be continued. So what happens is, fishermen will think that, oh, they are taking our money away. The authorities are trying to take our money away, but authorities are working hard to manage the fishery so that every year, if they are getting 5 rupees or 120 rupees, the, the authorities are trying to make sure that they are getting 120 every year. So if we are not managing, if we are not considering the grievances, the fishermen will go against the authorities. There will be some illegal activities. And eventually, the state of the fish stock will be affected.
Okay, so that, that's something that we need to consider. Uh, cross price. You, you asked about the cross price flexibility. Cross price flexibility is an important measure because if you if you if you don't know whether um, uh, whether another product is affecting your product, then how could you market your product? Okay, so uh, the substitutability is an important uh, measure that you have to consider. So um, let's say you take a product, um, sardines. Okay, sardine is a species which has been widely used. If the price of the sardine is go up or price of the mackerel go down, maybe people switch from sardine to mackerel. Right. So if you don't know the relationship. If there is a quantity, high quantity of the, the harvest of the, the sardine or high quantity of the mackerel, the price of this, the, the seafood will change. We don't know. So eventually, who will lose? The fishermen will lose. Okay? So they go for sardines thinking that the price will not be affected by other products. But when they harvest it and they, keep, they, keep, they land the product, and they found that, oh, mackerel is having higher price, and if they are substitute, then if there is a um, good uh, flow, for, flow of the product for mackerel, then whatever they, they landed, they have, they, they will be forced to sell it in a lower price, and they will lose their revenue. So, cross price flexibility is highly important while um, considering the market demand analysis. Okay. And, um, does it really matter? Um, it's not about the choice. So, you as a human being, you as a rational human being, you will always choose whatever that is best for your, your utility. The same example that I can give you about the sardines and, and mackerel. So if you go to the shop, you see that the price of the mackerel is lower, will you go for sardine or will you go for mackerel? You will go for the lower price. I mean, as, a, as a human being, that's a nature. It's not nobody's fault. Okay. So we need to consider this cross price flexibility also whenever we are considering the market study. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon all, respected chair, the most valued presenters and all the dignitaries on and off the dais. It is indeed a proud moment for all of us to be here in this session which discusses a very important topic in the current room. So let me extend my sincere gratitude to Dr. Anita V, who chaired the session in the most systematic and orderly manner. 
Now, my sincere thanks to Mr. Prati Sudhagaran, Assistant Professor, Texas State University, for his valuable words. As I noted, there is an efficient need to consider the market forces uh, before we evolve any management strategy. Also, as he pointed out, the need for inclusion of the fishermen also in the discussion group is also something which is very important in the current uh, Kerala scenario. Thank you, sir, for all your valuable contributions. And on behalf of the department, I extend my hearty vote of thanks to uh, Ms. the presenter, uh, Ms. Saisri KG, and also S. Pranjit, Mr. Praveen, and Ms. Jayasri in their absence for gracing their important works. And finally, I would like to thank all the dignitaries, our faculty members, and all my friends for sharing your findings and opinions today. Thank you all.